Hey, welcome back my friends. Today we're going to talk about another dynamics equation of motion problem. We're going to be talking about normal and tangential components one more time. Okay. In this particular problem we have a, uh, a shaft that comes up and is bent and it's spinning around, right? And as it spins, this little collar here has slid up the, up the uh, bar and is like in, in a particular place, right? So as that thing's rotating, that is staying out there from that centripetal motion that's trying to push it up the pipe. Now for me, this is a perfect kind of question I bet you would see on an exam because you're gonna to have to do some components here. Now it's pretty simple, but just the simplest resolving into components tends to like blow people's minds, but let's just see if we can do it, okay? They tell us that the two kilogram spool B, which is this guy here, is spinning on an incline rod, okay? So as it goes around, it's staying in that position. Mu sub s is 0.2. Now this time they didn't even try and trick us with kinetic because we know that the thing is not sliding, it's staying where it is. And so in order for it to stay, we need static friction coefficient. So find the max speed, and what is the max speed gonna be in? Speed is in meters per second in this particular problem. And so that speed is like how fast it's moving around uh, not angular velocity, but just the speed of the collar. Uh, how fast it, can it be without slipping up the rod? So it can't zoop, slip up the rod and off, okay? So I think the simplest way to do this is to look at the collar by itself. Okay, so let's go over here and let's draw a free body diagram of the collar, okay? So here's the collar. Okay. Now let's talk real quick about our normal and tangential components. Now this thing is spinning with a constant speed, all right? It's find the speed, the constant speed, which means there's no acceleration. So if this guy has two components of acceleration, number one component might be like right here, right? Which is like tangential to that path that it's spinning around. We'll call that a t and then it's got another one which is actually there we'll call that a n because this is a oh that wasn't very good was it how about that that's a right angle there okay do you see that so the tangential acceleration is what well since it's moving with a constant speed they want us to find the speed then the tangential acceleration is going to be zero well, what about this guy? What about that anormal uh, acceleration? Well, that's not gonna be zero, okay? So that's that centripetal force that's trying to shoot it up there, right? So the force due to the centripetal um, rotation of that thing, the centripetal force is equal to ma, mass times acceleration. And I guess the big thing is, is that the mass is given, right? Where is the mass? Right there, two kilograms. So the centripetal force that that thing experiences from its normal component, right? Remember the last example, the one on the string, right? The normal is the tension in that string, okay? The mass is 0.2, no, just plain two. Two kilograms. And the acceleration, well, the acceleration is not the tangential, but the acceleration is normal. And the normal acceleration we know is V squared over rho. Do you remember that? A sub N equals V squared over rho. Okay. Now here's a big mess mistake on this problem is what is rho? Okay. Rho is that, that radius uh, that, the, that the thing is traveling around. Well, you might be tempted to say it's 0.25 but it's not 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is the distance up that inclined rod. The real distance for rho is right here, okay? This is rho, okay? Can we calculate that? Well, since we have a slope triangle here, this is a three, four, five slope, right? Then this side over here must be the, that's the four-fifth side, isn't it? times the hypotenuse, which is 0.25, right? And this side over here 
right, would be three-fifths. We don't need that. We just need this guy. This is our row right there. So four-fifths of 0.25 is equal to 0.2, and that's meters, okay? So we know this guy right there, okay, that is 0.2. So the, the centripetal force is equal to two kilograms times V squared over 0.2. There you go, okay? So let's go back over here and let's look at our free body diagram of the collar. What's acting on the collar? All right, here we go. On the collar is this, number one, boom. Gravity sucks, right? The weight of the collar, which is two kilograms, two kilograms times 9.81 calculator. Okay, here's the calculator. So two times 9.81 is 19.62. I probably could have done that in my head. Newtons, right? What else is acting on that collar? What else is acting on it? Well, what's pushing it this way? What's pushing it, trying to push it off the shaft? That guy is, right? So look here. Let's do this. There's our F. And what is F equal to? M-A. So F is equal to uh, 2 times V squared over rho. Okay? What else is acting on this? Well... There is some normal force, right? The collar pushes on the bar, and the bar pushes back, right? Uh, and this is point B. Let's just call that normal at B. And one more is the, the, the collar is trying to slide up the bar, but friction's like, uh, I don't like you to slide, right? So friction, friction is going like this. There's the friction force. And we're looking for the maximum, and so we're, we are talking about fun friction over here, so this is going to be mu times n, which is, uh, what is mu? 0.2, right, times the normal at B, okay? There you go. There's a good free body diagram of what's going on. So we have the centripetal force that's trying to push it off the rod. we got friction that says, I don't think so. we got the weight going down, and then we got the normal on the rod here. So the last thing to do is let's break this into some components here. Let's put one here and one there, and then one here and one there, okay? Let's see. Since this is a three, four, five, the X component is, this is gonna be four fifths, isn't it? So this guy is four fifths of 0.2 times NB. This guy is three-fifths of 0.2 times NB. Uh-oh. Now, when I did this one, I'm at 90 degrees. It's going to switch on me. This is going to be the four-fifths, and this is going to be the three-fifths now, right? You follow along with me? If this was a three, four, five, then this is uh, the three, four, five going the opposite direction now. So this guy is three-fifths of NB, and this guy is four-fifths NB. Okay, simple stuff, right? Hey, man, if you don't understand just resolving these forces into basic components, we're going to be in trouble, okay? <laughs> but we can do it, can't we? So I've got a free body diagram. I've got everything broken up into parts. You know the easiest thing to do now? Let's write two equations. Here we go. And we're, we know these equations. Some of the force in the X. Okay, what do we got going on in the X? Okay, in the X, I've got this guy going that way. Let's, let's put him on there as positive. So two times V squared over 0.2, okay? And then I got this guy going that way. So minus four fifths times 0.2 times NB. Uh, and then I got this guy that's going in the negative direction, so minus three-fifths in B. Whoop, there you go. So, oh, uh, there's a B squared, there's NBs, too many unknowns. Let's do the next equation. 
sum of the force in the y. Okay, here we go in the y direction, what do we have? Well, he goes uphill, let's put him in there. Four fifths in B, okay? And then we got this guy going downhill, minus 1962. And then I got mm, this guy going downhill, so minus, uh, what is that guy? 0.2 in, oh, three fifths times 0.2 in B, okay? Uh, you know what that looks like? That looks like one equation with one unknown in it down here, doesn't it? So 4 fifths is 0 0.8 minus, that's, that's a 0 0.6. 0 0.6 times 0 0.2, that's a 6 times 2 is 12. So 0 0.12. And then we'll move this guy to the other side, equal zero, right? Gotta put your equal zero on there. Okay, move that guy to the other side, equals 19.62. And so, let's see, eight minus 12, that's a 0.68. So what are we gonna do? On 19.62 divided by 0.68 equals 28.85. So NB, is equal to 28.85 newtons. That's how much force that that collar is being pushed into the rod, and that's the rod pushing back on him, okay? So this guy right here is 28.85, okay? Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for V. Oh, here we go, here's V. Oh, look at this, now we know U and we know U, right? So let's see. Hold on, here we go. So I'm gonna move these two guys to the other side. So number one, 0.8 times 0.2 equals 0.16 times 28.85 equals, that's 4.1, no, 0 0.61, 0 0.616, right? Plus this guy over here, which is uh, 0 0.6 times 28.85, that's 17.31. And all of that is gonna be equal to this right here, right? Which, uh, let's see, two divided by 0 0.2 is 10, 10 V squared. So let's just add those two together. So let's see, 4.616 plus 17.31 is 21.92 divided by 10, divided by 10 equals, and then that's squared, so I've got to square root the whole thing. So square root, and there's my answer. So V, over here, V is equal to, I got 1.48, 1.48 meters per second, okay? All right, there you go. So you have to understand that that centripetal force is the thing that's pushing that thing off the end of that rod. And I get that from my V squared over rho here times the mass, mass times acceleration, right? And then the rest is putting it in a simple free body diagram, breaking it into components, force X, force is Y, we know how to do that. Here's the normal force at B. And there's the velocity that that thing has to go to keep from sliding up. So if it goes a little bit faster than that, right, then this friction here is not able to hold it and whoop, right off the end of the rod it'll go, okay? I hope that helps. This is a good test question. Break it into components. But we're gonna get 100 on it now, right? All right, see you next video.